Okay, well, um, I think we can uh, slowly start, Freddy. Okay. So if you would go to the to the next slide for me. Yeah, that's no problem. Yes. So the agenda for today, uh, we will have a small introduction. Um, we will talk about uh, a dust, of course, for today's session, today's webinar, uh, about major web application threats, best practices, and how to also integrate dust in your CI CD pipeline. And at the end, we will have uh, some time uh, for some questions uh, and answers. Okay. So who are we? So my name is uh, Dominic de Smit. I'm uh, the CEO of DevSecOps Academy. Uh, my background is in software engineering and uh, security. Uh, I've helped large organizations uh, with their security programs, uh, as well as uh, on the technical side, as on the awareness side. And currently with the DevSecOps Academy team, uh, we are building out the next generation DevSecOps hands-on skill building platform. Yeah, so I'll go next. So uh, my name is Freddy Gomez. Um, currently, uh, I'm studying at uh, Fontes uh, uh, University in Eindhoven. Uh, so last semester, I have performed uh, an internship uh, in the security field uh, at DevSecOps Academy. Uh, and uh, during my internship, uh, I have created a course uh, regarding uh, dynamic application security testing uh, on their uh, DevSecOps Academy e-learning platform. Um, so. Yeah, maybe could wait one second. Not too fast, Freddy. <laughs> so yeah. DevSecOps Academy. So what is DevSecOps Academy all about? So uh, our aim is to make you hands-on in secure DevOps as soon and effectively as possible, right? So that means that we try to uh, take real-world resources, uh, real-world challenges and situations and put them in virtual lab, yeah, virtual lab environments. We make sure that uh, the minimum amount uh, of theory uh, is required for you to get started, right? Because we really want you to focus on the hands-on aspect and yeah, the hands-on part. So you can apply the concepts and the exercises that you learn uh, directly in your daily work. One of the important aspects of DevSecOps Academy is that we have a community-powered course program. So we don't only create the courses ourselves, uh, but we work with a, a community of security experts worldwide to create courses. And this is how we can also get the most knowledge and uh, the best knowledge on our platform. Um, so these are very important aspects of, of our platform uh, because we really believe that the next generation of engineers and people working in, in software development do need to have hands-on skills uh, in security as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's DevSecOps Academy. So today, of course, uh, we have our webinar around automated DEST. Uh, DEST is one of the many aspects in Secure DevOps. Uh, and it's also one of the, I would say, a little bit more difficult uh, topics uh, because the automation and getting it uh, on an effective speed is not the most easiest thing to do. Um, but again, today uh, uh, you will uh, uh, get the opportunity to do the course that we have recently developed that Freddie has worked on and you will get a 15 days, uh, you will have 15 days to get free access and to complete the course. So basically between uh, this time frame, you're allowed to do within your own time, do the, uh, the course and also the hands-on labs. And we are very also looking forward to any feedback uh, that you might have. Okay, let's go to the next. Yes, so I will be taking over from now then. Thank you, Dominic. Um, so yeah, so as Dominic had uh, already mentioned, dust is one of the uh, main techniques that is, uh, that is uh, uh, performed uh, for secure DevOps. Um, dynamic application security testing, mostly known as dust, is um, categorized as a type of uh, black, black box uh, testing. Uh, meaning that uh, all the testing or security uh, testing is done from the outside, uh, kind of uh, simulating uh, the interaction that the user would have uh, with, the, with the web application. Um, and this is uh, basically done by uh, simulating external, uh, external sorry, uh, attacks 
uh, that will be attempting to penetrate these web applications and looking for uh, possible vulnerabilities and flaws. Um, this technique or, or this procedure is uh, mostly uh, performed uh, in the later stages of the software development lifecycle, uh, when uh, there is already a product that is uh, in, uh, waiting to be released, um, and uh, dust then is performed during the testing phase to um, to check if there are any security flaws that were left behind uh, during the development phase and how it will uh, how it will simulate how a user interacts with the website uh, and uh, it will basically uh, scan for for any possible uh, possible flaw. Um, so now we will go through some of the major um, web application security threats that are that are known. Um, so uh, one uh, good uh, document or, or that that uh, represents or that shows this uh, that in detail is OWASP top 10. So um, OWASP top 10 is basically um, a standard awareness document uh, for developers to be aware uh, of uh, possible security or web application securities threats, um, and it will uh, it will represent basically uh, most critical security risks to to your uh, to your web applications. Um, and in there, uh, you will be finding the uh, top ten uh, most uh, uh, common uh, security uh, threats uh, on uh, uh, that are encountered in uh, in web applications. Uh, the first one is uh, injection. Um, so for the new uh, version of OWASP Top 10 that was released last year in 2021, uh, there was also uh, cross-site scripting, but it was merged uh, to merge together with injection to become one uh, as injection now. Um, and um, basically the, the injection part uh, is performed when uh, user supply data is, is not validated or filtered correctly. Uh, and uh, it will uh, allow uh, unwanted users to perform uh, uh, Activities or, or um, I would say, uh, actions uh, in in uh, in when uh, interacting with the server that could lead to uh, data uh, being um, exposed that should be not uh, private data and sensitive data uh, or the modification of or deletion the, of this data as well. That is something that um, every uh, enterprise focuses to to maintain uh, the the privacy uh, of of their information. Uh, there's also the server-side um, request forgery that was introduced in the new version of OWASP Top 10 as well. This is also a new one um, that uh, basically allows attackers to send malicious requests uh, to, to, um, to the systems via this vulnerable um, uh, web server. Um, also, the broken access control um, that uh, basically um, emphasizes that uh, each uh, user should have uh, uh, specific roles uh, for, between uh, the system. So uh, if uh, people um, tend to, uh, for example, an administrator will have different roles as a, a normal user. And if this is broken, then uh, some users would uh, could uh, perform actions uh, that are unwanted and that could have uh, big repercussions. Some of the other ones are also cryptographic failures, um, insecure design, uh, security misconfiguration uh, that uh, it's easier said than done in most situations saying that uh, we should not have security misconfiguration, but of course, no system is perfect. And sometimes also there's human error. So uh, of course there are best practices that uh, that uh, engineers and, uh, and uh, developers should uh, uh, be following. But of course there can be uh, some uh, misconfiguration, uh, but of course, um, while using um, uh, better practices, these uh, misconfigurations uh, can be kept to a minimum or even uh, not be present. That is something really difficult, but of course, every uh, enterprise aims to. Uh, also, vulnerable and outdated components. Uh, basically, when new components are, are, are released or available, uh, the, uh, the previous components, uh, mostly most of the time, they're not being worked on anymore. So uh, the new uh, components, um, if there were any vulnerabilities or uh, security, at, um, um, I would say threats in the in the previous uh, components or previous versions, then in the new uh, components uh, versions, they are uh, they can be fixed and not be available anymore. Uh, so it's very important that this is done uh, every time that a new component is released to uh, update them. And also the identification and uh, uh, sorry identification and authentication failures. Um, if um, 
a user, for example, it's not authenticated properly uh, itself, uh, himself, sorry, uh, then this could lead uh, also to a major uh, data exposure or uh, also leakage um, and uh, also performing unwanted actions uh, that that uh, are not uh, that will not um, be uh, uh, good for the for the enterprise. That can also lead to uh, data leakage, uh, unwanted actions, uh, etc. Also, software and data integrity failures. Uh, and sorry, kind of uh, think I've yeah I've uh, put a duplicate of server request forgery, but uh, this uh, as I said, server side request forgery is a new uh, topic that was added uh, in last year in the OWASP top 10. Basically the 10, um, uh, I would say that were the, the 10 topics that are included in the OWASP top 10, security threats for web applications. Um, so yeah, I've also uh, included some uh, best practices. Freddy, uh, when, Freddy, sorry, uh, sorry, before you continue, can you quickly go back to the previous slide? Sorry so, yeah, to sorry. interview. So there was also one question uh, from the audience, uh, you know, if this uh, session and this course is going to be also about uh, authenticated versus unauthenticated scans. And I just wanted to, to mention, since you were also talking about here authentication failures, that the course teaches you uh, an authenticated scan because unauthenticated scans are uh um yeah more easier to set up than the un uh sorry the unauthenticated are more easier to set up than the authenticated and in the course you will really learn also how to set up automation for the authenticated scans so uh, i just wanted to mention this freddy so sorry uh go ahead no, yeah, no no problem actually i was going to mention this uh, later on on the presentation but now that you talk about it i can also mention this that uh, for this course uh, we'll, uh, I have focused it on uh, the injection uh, threat. So for this uh, course, uh, the the main uh, topics that we'll cover or the main security threats that we'll cover uh, are based on injection, uh, specifically, more specifically, uh, SQL injection and uh, cross-site scripting. Uh, so um, yeah, the, basically for, for this course, this will be the two topics that will be covered. But of course, there's a, a large spectrum of, of um, of topics that could be covered or security threats, but for this course, we'll be focusing on injection and more, most particularly uh, SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for I also I have also included uh, some security best practices. So uh, every um, team uh, that is, uh, or I would say, enterprise in general, uh, when uh, they are uh, developing uh, software, um, they also have. Their, their usual practices that uh, that they that they use uh, to ensure that uh, the, the the products that they are releasing uh, are as convenient as possible for the users. But of course, uh, the security part also should be ensured. And uh, there are also some best practices that uh, that they should be uh, ma making use of. So the first one is requiring the input validation. Uh, so uh, input validation basically prevents uh, improperly formed data from entering uh, an information system. So um, as, as it is really, really difficult to detect uh, a malicious user uh, who is trying to, um, to attack uh, the software, uh, sometimes it's, it's very uh, important, or I would say every time it's very important to sanitize the data that is inputted by the, by the user uh, to prevent that uh, these actions can be taken and that uh, unwanted actions are performed uh, by, by malicious users that could lead to a variety of problems such as uh, data disclosure or uh, unwanted actions such as uh, changing uh, certain um, parts of, of, or of the website or even interacting with, uh, with, uh, with the systems uh, directly. So it's very important to uh, uh, require this input validation. Um, also, uh, data encryption is also a very important uh, aspect. So as it helps uh, protect private information, sensitive data as well, and it can enhance the security of communication uh, between uh, the users and the servers. Um, so uh, I would say in essence, um, when, uh, when uh, your data is encrypted, uh, even if an, also if an unauthorized person or entity gets access to this data, uh, if it is encrypted, the, the, this user will not be able to, to read it. Uh, so even if, if it occurs uh, the, that uh, that the data is disclosure, then if it's encrypted, it will not be uh, accessible or it will not be readable. I would say for the user that performs these actions. Um, also, authentication um, and access control. 
so this uh, this is a very important step um, as it ensures um, that uh, the verification of the users and creates different roles uh, for for each user since from the administration administrative role until a normal user that's accessing um, for example the website it's very important to create these roles to know who is able to do what who's able to change uh, uh, properties or or data uh, or uh, or different aspects uh, it's very important to create these roles um, also avoiding security misconfigurations as i mentioned before uh, it's very it's easier said than done in most situations to avoid these mis uh, misconfigurations but 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 of course uh, there are best uh, there are practices that uh, or techniques that should be uh, utilized uh, by every team to ensure that that uh, uh, the mis misconfigurations can be can be prevented at any cost uh, that could lead uh, later to um, to major problems for for the enterprise um, yeah, so I'll also now discuss a little bit about the other type of application security testing. So, um, or one of the other that is uh, the syst um, uh, static application security testing. So these two are two types of application security testing. Of course, for this course, the, the focus was on dynamic application security testing, as uh, mostly known as DUST. Uh, but of course, they are performed during the software development lifecycle, but SUST uh, in particular is done uh, in I would say earlier in the software development life cycle, in the in the earlier stages where the the software is still being uh, developed and they're um, getting everything together. So, um, SUST uh, is a type of white a white box uh, testing, and da uh, DUST will be a type of black box testing. As as I mentioned before, DUST um, simulates uh, or uh, yeah simulates the the action of the user accessing the website from outside. So uh, that's why it's called black box text testing, kind of a, a, a penetration testing process. Uh, they're very similar. So um, also SAST requires the source code. Uh, so uh, for example, when you're working a project and different developers, they kind they uh, I would say uh, push their uh, changes, uh, for example, to a, to a repository um, and they have this SAST that's implemented to um, to check for uh, security flaws in the earlier stages so that they can be fixed uh, when, when these changes are made. So this is already incorporated. Uh, and then DUST uh, is uh, performed, uh, as I said, in the later stages of uh, software development lifecycle, uh, uh, most, more specifically in the testing phase where uh, the, the running, uh, the software is already, uh, can be already put in a running state, uh, already deployed. Uh, I would say, and you can make use of this technique, uh, the dynamic application testing or DUST to uh, check for any flaws. Uh, it's very uh, important to perform this uh, this uh, technique before it's released uh, as uh, it will basically, as uh, already uh, Dominic also mentioned, when you can have, um, you can also have uh, an authentication process using DUST, uh, for example, to simulate an authenticated user uh, and when you have everything together and in later stages where the, we have already a working product, I would say, uh, performing DUST will uh, perform this, uh, this security tests as an outside user that's already authenticated, that has some rights within the, the, the web application uh, or the website. And uh, this, um, this uh, technique will be used to, um, to find uh, these vulnerabilities and to allow the, the, the team to um, identify them and to mitigate them uh, as soon as possible as well. So uh, yeah, so some dust tools. So um, there are a variety of tools out there uh, that can be used uh, for uh, uh, for this uh, purpose. Uh, but uh, the, some of the main ones uh, I would say are com also commercial. That's yeah, for some enterprises. Uh, yeah, of course it's it's they can make use of them, of course. But uh, yeah, there's also for someone who wants to get started with uh, dynamic application security testing can be used, can you also use uh, already solutions that are there that are also open source. Um, so uh, the, the security tool that uh, is used in this course is OASP SAP. Um, so OASP SAP is, uh, is a tool that was created by uh, the famous community OASP uh, and it's uh, totally free for use. Um, and also a good aspect of OASP SAP is that is, uh, always being uh, changed or uh, updated. So uh, every, uh, I would say there's, there are constant um, updates that uh, ensure that uh, the tool is always optimized and 
uh, the, the standards of it are always increased. Um, also, um, for, for, the, for this course, uh, it's totally automated uh, between um, a GitLab uh, uh, CICD pipeline. So uh, when, uh, for example, to simulate the procedure where uh, a team is working in a specific uh, product or software, um, you can integrate OASPSAP into your pipeline to perform the security scans. And uh, when, uh, the, when the, the, as I mentioned before, the, the application is in a running state, uh, OASPSAP will be performing these authenticated scans to uh, check for any vulnerabilities that may be contained within the, the, the running app web application. Uh, and it will provide at the end uh, reports for analysis for the team to, to check uh, what vulnerabilities were found, uh, what is the impact of these vulnerabilities, uh, and also to kind of create a plan uh, on how to mitigate this, uh, this uh, vulnerability that were found. So WhatsApp is a very, very good tool for people that are getting started and also for pe pe people that already have experience, but especially for people that are getting started as it's very simple to use, open source, uh, and it provides uh, good feedback and uh, yeah, easy to use. Uh, I would say it's the, it's the number one uh, reason uh, how to, why to start with WhatsApp if you're getting with, uh, uh, in, within the security uh, spectrum or you're trying to get started with uh, with implementing your own solutions using dynamically secure, uh, application security testing, I think WASDAP is a very good solution for the reason that I have mentioned uh, before. Um, yeah, so now uh, talking uh, more specifically about the course that I have developed. So uh, I've uh, stipulated some learning objectives for this for this course. So first of all, you will be automating the tool that uh, I have just uh, um, mentioned before, OASPZAP, into a CI/CD pipeline. Uh, this will be done. Uh, in, on a running website that is uh, deployed in the cloud. And after this is uh, performed, you will uh, automate this tool to perform this uh, security scans, uh, uh, trying to identify uh, vulnerabilities between that running uh, web application. Uh, after uh, automating OWASP uh, there are uh, there's a step to um, generate reports. Reports are very important, I would say, for every, um, whenever, whenever security scans are performed, generating reports for further analysis it's, it's a very important step it allows the team to look into to more detail i would say into the scans look uh, which uh, sector will which i would say which um, files what's the severity of the of the uh, of the this the vulnerabilities uh, what may have caused it and starting to think about ways to mitigate it and also to look back maybe uh, a couple of uh, I don't know, months ago, what were the incidents? If there was an incident like the one that was found now, what was done to mitigate it? So keeping track of these reports uh, are very important. Uh, and as it gives already a more detail about the, 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 the scans that were performed using OSPZAP. And at the end, of course, um, there will be a phase to uh, mitigate uh, these found problems. Uh, you will uh, also, sorry, found vulnerabilities to be more concrete, and uh, you will be uh, using different techniques, uh, um, applying better practices to ensure that these vulnerabilities are not uh, uh, available or not present when uh, these uh, scans are performed uh, once again. So uh, to divide it, um, there every course uh, within the platform uh, has uh, two uh, sections, or say two, it div it's divided into two parts, a preparation lab and a hands-on lab. Uh, the preparation lab also, uh, at the end of it, uh, contains a quiz and this quiz basically tests your knowledge and uh, basically ensures that you have gained the right, uh, the, the, the knowledge that's necessary to uh, complete the hands-on lab. Um, and this, for my course in the preparation lab, you will be learning more about dynamic application security testing, uh, learn about the tool that, uh, that's being presented, WASPs up, uh, ways of automating it uh, and how to configure it properly to perform uh, these security scans. And at the end, there will be also, as I mentioned, the a quiz to test your knowledge and to see if you have gained the right knowledge or the, the knowledge that's necessary to complete the hands-on lab. And the hands-on lab, as it already the name already suggests, uh, it's where uh, you will be performing the course and the different assignments that are uh, included in, within the course. Um, These uh, assignments are incl include uh, deploying the website, uh, automating OASPs up, uh, creating reports and at the end to uh, fix the found vulnerabilities or how to mitigate uh, or mitigating this this found vulnerabilities. Um, so within our platform, this is how the course will look like. 
um, I have, I will just show you, uh, go quickly through the course itself really quickly, uh, just to show you how uh, it will look uh, between our platform. So yeah, Freddie, just... Freddie, maybe Sorry. before we uh, continue to the platform, are yes. there any questions maybe from the audience until now? Oh, oh yeah, yes. Let me just, uh, yeah. If, uh, again, to, to reassure, if you have uh, any question, you can let them on, on the chat and I will try to answer um, all of them uh, uh, correctly. And if, if there is no possibility, if there is a bigger question, or I would say a question that involves more like a discussion, we can have that after the meeting as well, no problems. So you can contact me on LinkedIn. But if there is any general question, I'm really glad to, to answer it uh, uh, right away, yes. So let's so wait. A, yeah, let's wait a few seconds, Freddy, and then we can uh, continue onto the onto the platform. Uh, so, like Freddy said, if you have any questions, this is the time to uh, to ask them. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will just uh, continue on, and then uh, questions can also be asked later on. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah there's one question from verma so in case we are not able to continue the labs in one go is it possible to pause resume it later um yeah i think dominic can answer this better i'm pretty sure that uh the if you can just do it on one go and if you are not able to finish it in one go i think you can contact uh the support team and they will give you uh more time to to complete it uh but i think dominic can go further uh and uh, explain that better yeah, currently you have to do the labs in one uh, one go, but uh, uh, don't be afraid if you don't make it, then we can reset uh, the lab for you one time and then you can try again. Uh, but there is a time limit for the labs. We cannot uh, give, let's say, unlimited uh, lab time uh, to everyone. Okay, uh, well, Freddie, I think uh, we can continue. Uh, if there are some more questions, then we can ask, uh, answer them later on. Okay, so that's okay. But uh, at any time, if you have any questions, about what I've uh, what I'm explaining or showing, just let them know. Let just let me know through the chat, and I will uh, answer them as soon as possible. Um, yeah, so um, I will just uh, go quickly to the platform uh, where I will be showing you uh, the course itself, how it looks like, the structure of it, um, which assignments are included. Uh, included. So just if you can give me one, just one second to open share the course itself. Um, Hopefully, uh, all of you can see my screen right now on the yeah, yeah it's platform, fine, Freddy. platform. Yeah, okay. So uh, when uh, accessing uh, the platform and uh, uh, wh when you get access to the course uh, through the link, uh, you will uh, be faced with this uh, page. Here, you will uh, be um, able to, to, you will see two uh, parts of it, the preparation lab and then the hands-on lab. Uh, so the preparation lab, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, is uh, the purpose of it is to prepare you for the course. Here you will be, uh, uh, you will see some some viable information that can be used during the course. Some setups. Uh, can you zoom in a little bit, Freddie? Because it's quite small. Uh, oh, maybe you can zoom in in the browser a little bit. Now, can you see it properly, more clear? Yes. Now it's a little bit too big. Yeah, that like that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Great, as thanks. you can see here on the left side, you will see the topics that are discussed here. Uh, for the preparation lab, you will see, for example, objectives, the, the dynamic application security testing, what it is, what are the benefits of it, why use it, why automate it. Um, also, uh, there are all other information that is that are included here, such as the website that's being uh, deployed or that's being used for this course, for example, uh, automating the tool that I mentioned before, OASP SAP. Um, and configuring configuring it uh, properly, and also other additional information regarding the course itself, how to set it up, how to launch the different uh, uh, machines, the resources, uh, and also at the end, as I mentioned before, you will be taking a quiz uh, after you have finished uh, uh, going through the preparation lab, uh, familiarizing yourself with some of the terms uh, and techniques that will be used during the, the hands-on lab, you, will, you can take this quiz, quiz will uh, kind of serve as, as a proof uh, of, of, of the no gain knowledge during the preparation lab and this will help you uh, see if you have uh, acquired the, the, the knowledge that's necessary. Um, and then of course you will after finishing the preparation lab and uh, at the quiz as well 
you will then go to the hands-on lab. So you can zoom a little bit off right now and I'll zoom in after getting to, yeah, so again, so this is the hands-on lab. So here uh, will be, here you can find all the resources and the assignments that will be performed in, in this course. So on the left right uh, hand side, you can see uh, all the assignments that are included here. So as you can see, of course, there's again, an introduction explaining you some general information about the labs, um, the, the objectives of the lab, of this lab. And then you can see here, for example, from this line, you will start performing the, the different uh, assignments or tasks for, for this course. So it ranges from deploying the, the, the application itself, uh, the, the vulnerable ap uh, application, uh, configuring OSPs up, uh, making use of, of the right uh, commands uh, um, um, in between uh, the, the, the GitLab uh, repository or the, the pipeline, sorry. Uh, and then there you will be configuring uh, OASPs up and automating it so that uh, after deploying the, the, the website, you will be performing these scans to uh, check for uh, any found vulnerabilities. Uh, after uh, automating this process, uh, you will be generating a report. Um, this report, as I said, can be used uh, after after the execution of the scans for further, further analysis. In this report, you will be finding a lot of viable information that can be used to mitigate the found problems, such as severity, uh, problem description. You will have a description of the vulnerability itself if you're not too sure what it means. Uh, and also sometimes, uh, depending on the vulnerabilities, there are also uh, ways of mitigating or tips, I would say, on how to mitigate them and how this can affect uh, your, your solutions. And at the end, you'll be fixing one of the vulnerabilities, as I mentioned before, this uh, course will um, uh, cover uh, the vulnerabilities between the injection uh, topic that was shown from OWASP top, uh, OWASP, uh, top 10, sorry, uh, regarding uh, cross scripting and uh, SQL injection. And at the end, you will be fixing one of these vulnerabilities, uh, using, making use of better practices that I already mentioned uh, before. And uh, you will be, uh, after this uh, vulnerabilities, vulnerability is uh, fixed, you can rerun your scans to validate that um, the correct uh, practices were implemented uh, rather than the, the, the practices that were implemented before that generated this um, these vulnerabilities. Uh, and also at the end, you will be able to, um, when you're done with your course, uh, you can also, um, the, the company also will say, it, um, the feedback from, from the, their, cost, uh, their students is very uh, viable uh, and it helps to, um, to uh, better other uh, courses that are being developed. So after completing the course, if you have any feedback, uh, you can, um, also submit it through the survey. So after completing it, please, uh, you can uh, fill in the, the, the survey and this will uh, help uh, to uh, better uh, the, the quality of uh, future courses that are being developed. Um, and yeah, so basically after completing it, uh, you can, um, the, the, of course, uh, sorry, uh, I forgot to mention as well, that for every uh, assignment or every, I would say every uh, task that you perform, there's also an automated checking going on. So for example, if you finish one of the assignments, uh, you will have uh, already uh, on the left side, uh, a tick or something that's validating your, your assignment. So if it was performed correctly, you will uh, see this uh, green tick on the left side. And if there are, if the system maybe detects that there are something that's wrong that should be improved, you will see that message also on your screen. So it's a very good way to check if your work uh, of, or the assignments were performed correctly. Um, um, so yeah, so after performing it and completing it successfully, uh, you will, uh, the, the, the course will be checked. And uh, if, uh, if everything is uh, correctly uh, performed, then you will be uh, granted the, the certificate for, for this course that I will show uh, at the end how the certificate looks like after completing this course um, as well. Um, so yeah, I think I will just go back to the presentation then. One second. Yeah. Can you see my screen, your presentation already? Is it on the screen? Yeah, but you have to switch uh, again oh, yeah. to display mode. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Should be 
correct right now, yes? Okay. Mm, not yet. No, not yet. One second. Is it right now or? Mm. Not sure why it's not switching. Maybe uh, try to share again and try yes. again. Yeah, I'll just share again. You can just come here and then start presenting. Is it, uh, yeah. can you see it right now? Okay. Yeah, that was okay. correct. So yes. um, yeah, just to to uh, so thank you, Freddy. Just to to iterate quickly uh, what you were talking about. So um, there is a three uh, hours maximum available uh, hands-on lab time for uh, everyone. So you need to complete the hands-on lab in in one go. Doesn't mean that you need three hours, right? Uh, some people uh, take one hour. Some people some people some people take two. It really is depending on how much experience and knowledge you already have. And uh, be very well aware that after three hours, uh, uh, the lab will be automatically destroyed if no review is requested. So at the end of the steps, there will be a button saying uh, uh, submit. Uh, and then you really need to press that button in order uh, uh, to get the lab reviewed. Yeah? So once you think you have done everything correctly, uh, press that button and then uh, the, the system is going to check uh, your results. Like Freddie mentioned, we have automated checking in place. Um, it tries to uh, make sure that you are staying on the right path. It's not always 100% correct. So don't let it distract you if you think you're doing it the right way, because then at the end, you can still submit the lab for review and someone will manually look at it. Um, we have hints and solutions available in the platform. So if you don't know exactly how to continue or you're stuck, you can take a, a, a solution or a hint, and then it will guide you to, uh, to proceed. So uh, we always try to make sure that uh, everyone is able to complete the labs successfully. Um, there is a support available. Um, we do offer retries uh, during this event, uh, but only during this event. Uh, in normal uh, ways, we only offer three hours of lab time uh, uh, per, per course or per lab. And then people will need to buy additional lab hours if they want to spend more time on it. But for this event, don't uh, don't be afraid to try it out. Um, you'll be able to get uh, a retry if it if it doesn't work out. Like Freddie mentioned, uh, the platform uh, is not perfect yet. Yeah, uh, that's why we also have a survey at the end of each course uh, to make sure that we get your feedback. Um, so please. Uh, after doing the, the course, uh, uh, give us a little bit of your time uh, to provide some feedback so we can improve the course and the platform. That will be very much appreciated um, so that we can even make the platform better. Um, and last but not least, of course, uh, have fun. Yeah, it's all about learning new skills, in this case, in dust, automating dust um, scans. And, uh, you know, that uh, you have to have fun doing it and uh, hopefully uh, you will also get some learning out of it that you can apply then in your daily job. Okay. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned before, so this is um, the certificate that uh, you will be granted after the successful completion of the course. So this is just an example of from one person that has already completed uh, the course. Um, if after it, you can, uh, you will get being granted access to this uh to this uh, uh, certificate through the achievements uh, section. Uh, so you can, uh, yeah, as approval that you have completed the, the, the course uh, successfully, yes. Um, yeah, so first of all, thank you ever, everyone for being here for, for this webinar. Um, yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, ask them through the chat and I will uh, try to answer all of them. Uh, and if there is, uh, if someone wants uh, more clarification, clarification, uh, we can have uh, also a discussion uh, to LinkedIn afterwards if that's also possible. But uh, yeah, please, uh, if you have any questions regarding the presentation or the course itself, uh, please uh, let me know through the chat and I will try to answer uh, all of them.
Yeah, we have we do have already one uh, question, Freddy. Uh, the question is: Will this automated death scan and CI/CD pipeline cover all of the OS 10 2021 vulnerabilities? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ranjit. Sorry if I mispronounced uh, your name, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned before as well, uh, for for this course, it will only cover uh, the injection part. So um, most more specifically, uh, cross-site scripting and SQL injection. Um, yeah, maybe in the future, I don't know if the company wants or if the platform wants, uh, they want to extend uh, on the on the course. It can uh, hopefully it can be done, but for now, it only covers uh, the injection uh, part. Uh, more specifically, SQL injection and uh and cross-site scripting yes yeah okay thanks uh thanks freddy so does anyone have any other questions for now or is everyone Dominic, i have one question uh, of course for uh, so i was you know thinking uh you have developed a lot of you know small small you know modules or you know uh, specialized area like you know mobile security to, uh, then cloud security is there any plan to you know integrate it into you know some kind of certification like you know foundation certification professional certification and you know or expand in you know certain area like you know mobile security or going to launch or planning or working on any advanced uh, topics uh, I think there were uh, a few questions there, uh, Pradeep. Uh, one question is on mobile security. We do have already a course on mobile security. We have just recently launched it. Um, and we do, of course, have the roadmap to also have more courses around mobile security, for example. So I believe that was one question. The other question around the certification. So that will be for us later on, uh, because currently we really want the community to do these labs, to do these courses, and to value the certification that comes with it. So we don't want any other party saying, okay, this is good. That doesn't maybe have a true, true deep understanding of what DevSecOps is yeah, and what needs to happen. Um, later on, as we grow, we will definitely look at partnerships with some of these uh, certification bodies, uh, but that's not something for the short term. Does that a little bit answer both of your questions? Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rodi. Does anyone have any other questions so far, or is everyone dying to to start with the course and wanting to get access? Yeah, I think everyone wants to jump ready to the to the fun part. <laughs> yeah, I think so, right? Okay. Uh, well, if if there are no other questions left, uh, and then uh, one last question. Uh, in case we don't receive the free access email for the lab, who can we reach out any email addresses? So um, on, the, on the platform, uh, there is an option to start a support chat and our support department is aware of this webinar. Uh, and if you have registered on the platform, uh, they will be able to see that. So don't forget, that's very important. Don't forget to, to, uh, um, to register on the platform because then you'll be able to see your email address. And if something went wrong, then the support department can give you anyways the access. Um, but after this session, uh, someone from our team will, will give out uh, the access to everyone that's registered on our platform and you will be able to, uh, to do the course. Uh, and if you face any issues, please reach out to the, uh, to the support department. Uh, another question, uh, how can we get the PowerPoint for reference? So this uh, webinar will be shared later on. Um, uh, the full viewing will be available. Uh, so you basically will have the presentation inside of the webinar video. Um, uh, we don't share the, the, the presentation separately because it's already part of the webinar. Um, so you can watch it later on and, and skip to, uh, to any of the slides that you might need. Okay, um, well, I think uh, if there are no questions left, then uh, I think, Freddie, we should uh, start giving the people access and let them have a go at it. Uh, yes. I would like to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, I hope it was uh, informative, uh, and we hope that you will have lots of fun uh, doing the course. Uh, so thank you and hope to see you at our next webinar. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, Bye -bye. thank you very much for attending, everyone. Bye-bye.